Okay guys, so to begin you want your three colors and your one paper for prime and composite numbers. You should have three colors and half of the prime and composite numbers paper. Okay, first thing I want you to do is pick up your regular pencil. Not a colored pencil, but a regular pencil. And underneath prime, we're writing the definition. When we're talking about prime and composite numbers, we're talking about multiplication. And both the definitions for prime and composite have to do with the factors of numbers. Who can tell me what a factor of a number is? Mm -hmm. They're the numbers that we multiply to make a product. So if I'm multiplying seven times three, seven and three are factors. And what's the product of seven and three? 21. Okay. Well, composite, notice that it starts with C-O-M-P. That's the same root that starts the compound for compound words. And think about how compound words are two words put together, right? Okay, so think of some compound words that you know. Okay. So things like playground, airplane, right? Compound words are when we're putting more than one together. Composite is when there's more than one way to multiply and get that answer. Okay, so composite has three or more factors. So let's go back to my example of 21. We know we can have the factors 7 and 3 to make 21, but we can also have 1 times 21 to make 21. That makes 21 a composite number because I have more than one way to multiply it to get it. Prime numbers have exactly two factors. And those two factors are one and itself. So the number 11 is prime because the only way I can multiply and get it is using one and 11. Okay, so let's choose your colored pencils. And pick your favorite color for prime. Of the colors you picked, your favorite color should be prime. Choose your second favorite color for composite. So when I look at this list, I'm looking for numbers that I know I can multiply in more than one way to get it. And the first number I see like that is the number four. If I list the factors of four, I would get one, four, and two. The second number I see that works that way is six. What do you guys see that might be next where we have more than one factor? Right, eight. And this is where there's some confusion because people start to see this and they see even numbers 
and they think prime and composite has something to do with evens and odds, but it doesn't because the next number is nine. Nine's an odd number, isn't it? But it also has one times nine and three times three, so it has three factors. What about 10? Did you call it nine? Mm-hmm. 10 does work. What about 11? We already said 11 is not uh, composite, but 11 is our example for prime, so let's color that in with our prime number. Don't do the first row as prime yet. We'll come back and talk about that in a minute, okay? What about the number 12? Composite. What about 13? Mm -hmm. It's prime. We'll come back and talk about the first row in a minute. What about 14? Deep D? You guys should have your own pencils. Not sharing. Okay, 14 has more than one way to multiply and make it, doesn't it? What about 15? What about 16? Mm-hmm. And we get to 17 and we have to stop and think, is there any other way besides one times 17? No. Yeah. 18, there's more than one way, though, isn't there? We can do two times nine, three times eight, one times 18. I know 20 is composite. I want you guys to just take a couple minutes and start coloring the ones you know for sure are composite. If you're not positive, skip it and we'll check in a few minutes, okay? Again, if you're not positive, just skip them over and we'll double check and see if they're prime later. Okay. 
I start noticing a pattern when I'm looking at the fives going down. Straight down aren't all of these multiples of five. So they all have to be composite because they have one themselves and at least five. Yeah, that's where I started to notice it as it happens with the tens as well, doesn't it? Yeah, anything that's even we can do except for two. That's why we're leaving that top row not colored in with primes yet. I want to talk a little bit more about it. These are all even, so I can color them in. Yeah, this should be reviewed. If you guys notice, I'm going to start coloring in some of these primes to make them pop out of your chart for you. How many of you skipped 19 and 29 because you weren't sure? Good idea. So 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, and 41 are prime. And so are 61 and 71. But then everything else in the ones column is composite. As one of you already noted, everything that's even, so all those twos already got colored in. But there's some primes, there's a lot of primes actually in the three column. 13, 23, 43, 53 are all prime, and so are 73 and 83. Then we're going to skip over to the sevens column, and there's four of them in a row right here. 37, 47, 57, and 67. And then all the way at the bottom, 97. And it always surprises me that 79 and 89 are prime. I always look at those and think I should be able to divide those by 3. But they don't evenly divide by 3, so they're prime. And then most of the rest of this is composite. Let's get that colored in so we can talk about that top row with some interesting numbers in it. Let me give you guys another 30 seconds or so and then we'll talk about that top row. Okay, I want you to get your prime pencil ready. And let's go from the seven. How can I multiply and get seven? I can do one times seven, and that's the only way, true? With whole numbers, 
it's only 1 times 7. So I can color that in as prime. What other numbers in that role do you think we should be able to color in as prime? Yep, 5 works. I agree, 3 works. 2 has 2 factors, 1 and 2. What's left? 1 is neither. How can I multiply and get 1? 1 times 1. Remember the definition of prime is it has exactly two factors, one and itself. What does one have? Just itself. So we're going to color our one last color in for neither. And one is lonely there all by itself. It doesn't fit into either prime or composite. Okay, and with that, I would like you guys to get this glued into your notebook on the next page. You might need to trim the sides a little bit to make it fit. When I'm putting mine in my notebook, I'm noticing it's covering up this dot here for the spiral. So I'm going to cut this out a little bit here too so I can still see my spiral spaces. There we go. And we can get that glued in. And I want to try to do a better job of keeping our table of contents up to date. So once you get those dots put on the back and glued in, we're going to also update our table of contents. I'm gluing that in on page 17. And I'm going to go up to the table of contents and update this. Once you have it glued in and updated, I'd like you to clean up the supplies you used in your area. And let's get ready to switch.